Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. Ladies and gentlemen, I am happy to report that it is snowing outside. <laughs> Despite that chipper intro, today's photo shoot did not go well. Actually, you could argue that it was quite terrible. So rather than scrap this video or try to present my images as something good, I thought it would be an interesting exercise to break things down and try to identify exactly what went wrong. Because as you can see, conditions are great for landscape photography. Right, let's just roll back to that intro. There's the beginning of my first mistake, high expectations. Ladies and gentlemen, I am happy to report that it is snowing outside. Now the reason that I'm so happy about that is because I've basically planned my entire day slash video around a weather warning put in place by the Met Office warning of snow and ice. Because of those weather warnings, I already had a vision in my head, that of a snow-covered winter wonderland and characterful trees barely visible through a raging blizzard. And whilst having a clear vision can be a good thing, it can also cause you to dismiss anything that doesn't fit that idea. So what happens when those expectations of wild arctic blizzards are not met? I hope that wasn't it. <laughs> oh man, when I, uh, when I was driving here and when I arrived here, we had big fat flakes. And now we just have this fine snow, which is neither here nor there. It's not really transformed the landscape enough to make a compelling image. But with the big fat flakes, you can use them as they fall through the air and use them to soften the scene and, and create atmospheric fairy tale like images. Yeah, that's why I got excited. Whereas now, as soon as we're back to the order of the day, which which is disappointment. Well, when your expectations are not met, disappointment takes over, and rather than seeing all of the other possibilities in front of you, you only see what's not in front of you, the things you have no control over. So at this point, I'm already starting my photography on the back foot, and my creativity is being stifled. But wait a minute, wait, 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 I've come all the way out here, so it would be a complete waste of time if I were not to take an image. So instead of going for a cup of tea or trying a new location, I'm going to force an image, just so it feels like I'm being productive. So whenever I have a, an idea in mind, whether it's a vibrant sunrise, sunset or heavy snowfall, and it doesn't happen, I immediately start looking for the complete opposite of that thing which is typically is your intimate landscapes down by your feet. Now that, ladies and gentlemen, is some sound advice. But the problem I have is that it's getting dark and I simply do not have the time to wander, explore, and patiently discover those wonderful scenes in nature. So I settle for the very first thing that I find remotely interesting. So what I see here is this transition from decaying leaf and an open water through to this partially frozen slushy water with these random patterns, these holes, these repeating patterns. Now the idea of the image I've just described is solid, but that doesn't mean that the realized photograph will work. Here's an example of decaying leaf matter under ice. And here's another example, whilst not vegetation under ice, the aesthetic or the idea is the same. A transition in texture and color, creating an image which bridges the lucid and the abstract. So unfortunately, here is the shot I took today. Same idea as the other two I've just shown, but this time it didn't work. The reason it didn't work is down to that leaf matter beneath the water. It's an integral part of the image and it's just not interesting enough. There's no color, no texture, no repeating patterns. Quite frankly, it's just a bunch of mushy mess underneath the water. What's interesting about that? All in all, the idea was good, the execution was poor. Perhaps I could have gone in tighter, got my feet wet and worked the scene a little more. But at this point, I was out of my own head. I wasn't thinking, how can I improve this image? All I was thinking was that I need this image before dark. So I wasn't trying to make a photograph, I was simply trying to take one. So by this time, I had lost my enthusiasm altogether because I got too excited earlier on. My hope is that a good night's sleep in the van will refresh me for the morning. All right, so I've pulled over and I have service on my phone. Just checking the weather app now. 
overnight, we see a significant amount of snowfall. Right, I'm just going to stop here because here we go again. My expectations are getting built up. Now, there's nothing wrong with checking the weather and getting excited about the potential forecast. But in this instance, I was not getting excited about the forecast, but I was becoming dependent on it, thinking that snowfall would be the only way I could salvage this shoot because I planned an entire photo shoot around the snow. And I would go as far as to say I was desperate, which is not a good way to do landscape photography. You need to be free, easy, open-minded and relaxed. I was the complete opposite of all of that, which is almost certainly setting me up to fail. And I've said this for a long time now, quite often the harder you try to make a photograph, the more difficult you will find it. Wow, it's certainly got a lot snowier the higher up that we go. <laughs> And a lot windier as well, blimey. All right, we have arrived at our camp spot and uh, man there was a bit of a sketchy drive getting through those snow drifts at one point i couldn't see 10 feet in front of me it was all part of the fun as never arrived at a quite a nice park up a regular park up if you're you know if you're a fan of the channel you'll probably recognize it but never been here before in snow so yeah first things first i'm gonna get the diesel heater on oh but before i can do that i have to check the exhaust because it fills up with snow and then a the diesel heater won't work let me see yeah, that's all good. Air intake. See that? Diesel heater on. So this is always an important time for me when I can get in the van, settle down for the evening and reflect on the day's photography. And usually it fills me with optimism for the next day and it had done in this case, the snow was falling outside. I was warm, comfortable and cozy. So in theory, I should wake up and have one of the best days of photography of my life. But sadly, that wasn't the case. Well, good morning, everybody. Had a great night's sleep last night. Um, really, really good night's sleep. And I woke up this morning and was excited to see when I popped my head out of the door that there is a good layer of snow. So I'm excited to finish my coffee, finish my breakfast, get out this morning. <sighs> yeah, just enjoy it. You know, I'm not putting too much pressure on myself. Just going to walk around, see what we see, and hopefully grab a nice image or two. Now all of that was true, I had a great night's rest and had removed a lot of the pressure to photograph a portfolio worthy image, so mentally I was in a much better place than yesterday. But as I get out and begin my photography, you'll see that I'm still having a hard time, even though I got my wish of heavy snowfall overnight. The, uh, the gate's frozen shut, so I don't condone this, but I have to climb over it. Looking at the landscape I'm walking through, you'd think that I'd be making images left, right and centre, but here's the problem. I spent far too much time looking for perfection, and the harder I looked for that perfect image, the less I began to see. Wow, <laughs> it's absolutely beautiful, it really is. Now you might be wondering why I didn't shoot this scene behind me, and that's because I'd become fixated on a crisp, clean, perfectly perfect scene of snowy trees that didn't exist, and as a result of this, I'd closed off my mind to everything else that was around me. I, I've walked now for probably about a mile or so, and I haven't seen an image. Things aren't quite coming together. Just because you have snow doesn't mean that you automatically get beautiful shooting conditions. Things aren't quite coming together. Things aren't quite coming together. Yeah, that's because I was completely fixated on one very specific type of image that, as I've already mentioned, didn't really exist. So what I'm doing is I'm just looking around 
trying to pick out small frames within the bigger landscape. It's a great thing to do. It really is. And at the risk of repeating myself, the problem I had this morning was the same problem that I had yesterday evening. I have a good idea, but I'm taking the image in desperation just to try and get a shot because I felt as though I should be making great images in these conditions. So rather than have the idea and then explore it further and perfect the image perhaps somewhere else, I spend all of my time photographing the very first thing I see. And right across from me here we have this hillside with all of these uniform trees, a nice bit of snow, it's very abstract. Again, I think I've mentioned this in the past three or four videos of mine, <laughs> but I really like images that are monochrome that look like they could have been sketched with a pencil. Absolutely, I love an image that looks like it's been sketched by a pencil, but unfortunately this photograph doesn't meet the mark, although it's not too far off. But the problem is, I was taking a photograph and not making one. I mean, look at this slap bang in the center of the image, a big blotchy black boulder that breaks up the pattern and the repetition of the trees. If I'd have been paying more attention, I would have reframed this photograph. Something like this crop, perhaps which is much better, but still it's because I was not in the right frame of mind. I was rushing, I was desperate, I was frantic, I was frustrated, and basically all of the bad images in this video come down to me not being in the right frame of mind, and that is so important. So my general rule when out and about with my camera is that no matter how, oh, <laughs> it would help if I put, my general rule is to make sure that all three tripod legs are extended. Now my general rule is that if anything piques my curiosity, I explore it. So I'll stop, I'll look at it, and then typically I'll break out the camera just to see if it works. Even if I'm looking at it, I'm thinking there's no way that I can make a shot out of this. Well, sometimes you can because something's, something's got your attention. It's made you stop. And typically that thing is worth exploring. And for me, it's this reservoir, this, uh, this damn wall. <laughs> Sounds like I'm swearing, this damn wall. This damn wall that's curving beautifully around it. It wasn't necessarily the wall, but it's the light and the shadow that got my attention. So I did just mention there that you should stop and explore anything that piques your interest. Whilst earlier on in the video, I mentioned that the problem I had was that I settled for the first thing that piqued my interest. So a bit of a contradiction there, but the important thing is you should stop and explore anything that piques your interest, but you should also recognize when it's not working and when you're just simply trying to force an image. Now, I actually want to work really fast with this shot because although I'm the only person and here at the minute, all it takes is one person to come walking through the scene, and that's it. We're done for, and the image is gone. So for me, this is the most interesting part of the video because up until this point, I had felt a strong pressure to create amazing images, which led to nothing more than frustration and a creative block. But did you pick up on the fact that there was a lack of video footage showing my arrival to this location and no explanation as to what my plan was when leaving the last location? That's because by now I had given up on photography and video making and instead I was just going for a walk to check out a location for future photo shoots and as soon as I had relinquished that pressure to make images, I started to see things and began having fun again. Naturally, I grabbed my video camera to film this photo, but all in all, I'd pretty much given up. So I've popped on a 10-stop neutral density filter because I want a long exposure for this scene. And we're looking at about 15 seconds. Yeah, 15 seconds isn't enough for the look that I'm going for, so I'm going to do something I very rarely do, and that is stack. All right, so that's giving me 60 seconds. So uh, let's have to do this without getting my hand in shot. Actually, six seconds is perfect for me to thank the sponsor of this video, which is Squarespace. Now, if you don't know who Squarespace are, they're an all-in-one website platform where you can log on and you can build your own website with no experience, no web coding experience. You don't need to be a web developer or web designer. You can do it all yourself using their intuitive drag and drop system. It's really easy. 
and you get a fantastic looking professional website with an online store, online gallery, your own domain, the full works, everything you imagine a website to be, you can do it yourself at Squarespace. So if you fancy that and a website for your own photography, go to squarespace.com forward slash Heaton and give it a free try. And if you like your free trial, use the offer code Heaton for 10% off your first purchase. Right, <laughs> that's uh, my arm starting to ache now. You know what it is? This jacket's really heavy. It pulls down on my arm. Right, oh, just keep the tripod. Let's have a look. Now, I really like this image. Don't get me wrong, it's, it's no masterpiece, but the shapes and the tones really do it for me. And what's key about this photo is that I had completely emptied my head of all preconceived ideas about what images I should be taking, which almost seemed to allow other images in, because this is a far cry from what I'd been trying to capture for the past two days. Now, it could be that I had changed location or the sun had come out, but I think I was more relaxed, less pressured, and therefore Therefore, I was able to play with the scene more and craft an image rather than just take one. So after analysing this failed photo shoot, I have learned something that I already knew. Get rid of your expectations, be okay with not taking a photograph, and try to have a little fun. Music